them precepts. Roll. Indianapolis, Indiana. All right, uh, the Circle City Branch 144, or Circle GMS Circle City 144. We like to first start off by giving all glory and praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Rakadash. We like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that teach the truth and rule well. And we're out here to uh, uh, week in and week out to prophesy the downfall of this wicked kingdom, but also preach the gospel to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are the Biblical Israelites are starting off with the tribe of Judah who are the so-called Negroes, the tribe of Benjamin, the so-called West Indians, the tribe of Levi, who are the so-called Haitians, the tribe of Simeon, who are the so-called Dominicans, the tribe of Zebulon, who are the so-called Guatemalans to Panamanians, the tribe of Ephraim, who are the so-called Puerto Ricans, the tribe of Manasseh, who are the so-called Cubans. The tribe of Gad, who are the so-called North American Indians. The tribe of Reuben, who are the so-called uh, Seminole Indians. The tribe of Naphtali, who, who are the so-called Argentinians to Chileans. The tribe of Asher, who are the so-called Colombians to Uruguayans. And the tribe of Ishakar, who are the so-called Mexicans. To you we say Shalom. Shalom. And with that, we're just going to get right into it. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? It says, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Now, when you go into Isaiah 6, third chapter from the top, what this is going into is a prophecy of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, right, coming back to America to destroy this wicked kingdom and take Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, out of rulership. Right? Go ahead. This that is glorious in his apparel. Yep, and he said, uh, uh, with dyed garments from Basra. Look, you know, back then, you know, Basra was a, a chief or capital city of Edom. Right? What are one of, or what's Edom's main or capital city today? America, what we know about the scriptures as what? Babylon the Great. All right, go ahead. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Yep, because, hey, Yahweh Shah is coming back in an angelic force right, with the host of heaven or the angel of heaven. Backing them up, man. When they bring the destruction, all right, and render salvation to the elect. I that speaketh in righteousness, mighty to save. Yeah, mighty to save, because, hey, as well as Yahweh Bashim Yashai, they're bringing destruction to America, he's also bringing salvation to his elect, man. So you got three seconds. This is Jeremiah 50 and 33. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. So, hey, this, this is talking about modern day Babylon. Because hey, the last time the children of Judah and the children of Israel, which the children, the children of Judah is the southern kingdom, and right? the children of Israel is the northern kingdom. All right, last time we were oppressed together as a whole was back there and when? The uh, Egyptian captivity. All right, fast forward today, during the American captivity, all right, we're also oppressed together. Go ahead. And all that took them captives, held them fast, they refused to let them go. Yeah, beginning with Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, who was our main oppressor, right? They laid the most hell on us, right? But also, what, you got these other heathen nations who have also had a hand in the affliction of the children of Israel. Right? The scripture of Zechariah says, what? I am sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, and they have helped forward the affliction. So all the nations, you know, have had a hand in a downfall of Israel. So right. Somebody else, uh, uh, Book of First Maccabees, chapter two, verse ten. This is the book of First Maccabees, chapter two, uh, verse ten. What nation have not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? Hey, all nations 
the beginning when Esau, even the so-called white man, has spoiled <clears throat> or robbed the children of Israel, man. And all the nations have afflicted us, man. And what the Lord's getting ready to do is what we're reading from Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, where the Lord's going to take Esau, even the so-called white man, out of rulership, right? And also, what is the Lord going to do after the, uh, he takes out Esau, man? Set up the Israelites to rulership, all right? So ultimately, when, we, when the Lord does that, when the Lord sets up the uh, Israelites to rulership, hey, the curses are going to be put on uh, on the nations, beginning with Esau, even the so-called white man. They're going to have to drink of that cup of affliction, man. They're going to have to drink of the cup of slavery, man. All right, the yes, scriptures say uh, a reward unto her dope. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Yep, and as we always bring out, there's three meanings to the world. Right? In the Greek, you have what? Oikomeni, meaning the whole inhabitants of earth. You got cosmos, meaning a, a arranged government, harmonious or, or arranged government. You have eon or aeon, meaning what? An age or rulership. Now, the world that 2nd Ezra, chapter 6 is talking about, as rulership, right? Because it says, "What well, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it to follow." It, right? Because what the scripture tells what that the earth abided forever. So what you're witnessing, right, is the end of a wicked rulership, and the Lord is about to establish a righteous kingdom, a righteous rulership under Yahweh, right, on the, on the earth, man. Okay. This is Jeremiah 15 and 34. Their redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall truly be their cause, that he may give rest to the land, despite the inhabitants of Babylon. Okay, at the end of the day, man, Yahweh Bashem is going to judge for us, man. You know, he's going to deal with the nations for us. He's going to deal with those that afflicted us for us, man. The Lord has come to judge on our behalf, man. Everybody who put their hands on the children of Israel, man, hey, y'all not going on punishment. The Lord is going to come back and destroy this kingdom. All right, they're all nations. You know, Esau and Edom are going into slavery under the Israelites, man. Uh, I got one. This uh, is the ones that afflicted us. It says, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 14. It says, the sons also... Well, uh, where you want me to start? I know about this one. Where the Lord said, you know, uh, verse 10, verse 10. The book, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and the king, and their kings shall minister unto thee. This is the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, right? The sons of strangers, or the sons of the heathens, shall build up our walls, man, our kingdom, man. All right, we're going to force them to build up our kingdom. All right, and uh, can you read that latter part of the verse? Yep, it says, um, And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, mm -hmm. and their kings shall minister unto thee. And their kings shall minister unto thee. Minister means what? Serve. So, hey, these kings, man, of the other nations, man, they're going to do whatever we tell them to do, man. Because, hey, we're going to have the everlasting dominion and rulership over these nations. They ain't going to have no choice but to do what we say. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Is what it said what the Lord said in his wrath he smote us, meaning hey, in his wrath he put the curses upon us or afflicted us. Because what? We move the Lord's anger by doing things such as idol worship, you know, all men is wickedness, right? Also what that moved the Lord's wrath, therefore we suffer the curses. Right, but what he said in his uh, favor, he had mercy upon us. Right, so ultimately, at the end of the day, that's why the scriptures say what? That for Yahweh changes not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So at the end of the day, man, what? Yahweh Bashem Yashan, the uh, uh, mercy that he's going to show upon the nation of Israel is going to be everlasting, man. Indefinitely. It's like uh, uh, okay. eternal. Right. Yes, sir. Therefore, thy okay. gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. The the, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that and that their kings may be brought. So these heathens, they're going to continue to bring us riches and really bring us anything we want, man. Okay. We're going to tell them, hey, go get this, and they're going to fetch it for us, man. Thus said the scripture. All right. Says, the glory of Lebanon shall shall come unto thee. Uh, the fir tree, the pine tree and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Hey, hey, the scripture say what? That, uh, uh, 
earth is the Lord's footstool. So, hey, what Yahweh Bashmi is getting ready to do is what? To bring the earth back to paradise. What it once was, man. What it's supposed to be. Right? But, hey, with this wicked uh, 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 individual, Esau, even the so called white man of rulership, he has completely destroyed the earth, man. That's why scriptures say what? To destroy them that destroy the earth. That's what Yahweh Bashmi is coming to do, man. Destroy this wicked ruler, man. He's polluted the air, polluted the food. You know? Fucking up the people with medicine, so on and so forth. So-called medicine. Yep, so-called medicine. And hey, these are all things that you know this so-called white man has to pay for. Go ahead. Yep. And it says, uh, the son, the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, mm -hmm. and they shall call thee the city of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Yeah, because hey, in that day, man, all these nations don't acknowledge us. First and foremost, acknowledge that Yahweh Bashmi Ashai, right, is the only true and living power. All right, they're gonna acknowledge that what? That we are the children of Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. Last one. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, verse 15, whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. An eternal excellency, an eternal excellency, and a joy of many generations is what? You know, in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be immortal, man. We're going to live forever. Right? And the, and the nation of Israel is going to continue to grow, 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 and grow. Because when you read uh, uh, down in that chapter, it says what? That one, uh, a small one, a little one shall be as a thousand, and a small one as a, a nation. That's right. And so the Lord is about to make the nation of Israel the greatest nation on the face of the earth, man. And all this is coming from what we just brought out from uh, the beginning of Isaiah 63. Yahweh Shah turning, coming, and he's gonna. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of bloodshed in the in the salvation of uh, of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians that make up the, the twelve tribes of Israel. Yeah, the elect, the elect, of the those elect. Tribes, yeah. Right, right. That was it. Obadiah chapter 1 verse starting verse 17 but upon the Mount of Zion shall be a deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their uh, possessions what do you mean from Isaiah 14 Obadiah, Obadiah okay Obadiah, yeah. at 17. Okay. Uh, verse 18 and the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of J Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for, st for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken. So, hey, once the destruction takes place, right, and the Lord sets uh, Esau, Edom, so-called white race and chains, hey, after they serve that a thousand years of punishment, a thousand years of slavery, what's going to happen? All right, the Lord is going to use his men to round up the remaining Edomites and burn them up, man. Do away with the house of Esau forever, man. But Edom will no longer be a nation. All right, after that comes to pass, man. Thus said the scripture. Start back at the top. Okay. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel. Somebody grab, uh, what is that? Isaiah 59, when it speaks about he put on uh, righteousness and holiness as a as a shield and as a, you know what I'm talking about? It's because it said, uh, you stay where you at, I, uh, Read that part again. It says, uh, Isaiah 63 and one, who is this that is cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? That, this that is glorious in his apparel traveling in the greatness of his strength right i got two of them right so this is isaiah 59 and 17 it says for he put on righteousness as a breastplate and an helmet of salvation upon his head and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak so it said to, uh it said the gloriousness of his apparel because he he don't be war ready you know now the next verse this is isaiah 40 and 5 uh, Baba Kusha, read, read the last verse you read. It says, 
uh, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Right, that's the chariots, the, the greatness of the Lord's strength. When you read the scriptures, oftentimes it'll say the glory of the Lord, right? And the glory of the Lord is in reference to the chariots, right? When you read Exodus, when you read Moses and Aaron, it says, then the glory of the Lord descended upon the tabernacle. Those was the, those was the, the, the chariots, uh, in today's terminology, the UFO. So this is Isaiah 40 and 5, it says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of Yahweh have spoken it. So when, when Yahweh shall come back, right? He, gonna, he coming back traveling in the greatness of his strength. The UFOs, right? The chariots. Somebody grab. Uh, I was thinking about Revelation, the first chapter said, every eye shall see. You can grab that too. And also grab uh, when uh, the angels uh, told. Uh, 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 Acts. When they told them, um, why are you looking up? That's the Acts. same. Yeah, okay, grab yeah. that too. Because it said a cloud received them. See, that's a, the cloud, that's parabolic talk for a chariot or a, or a UFO. You know? I was just thinking that make it the cloud is chariot. You want, uh, you want that in Acts now? Yeah, you will have it, have it, they come. Uh, this is the book of Acts, uh, chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 9. He says, and he's, and he had, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud. He was taken, oh, in other words, he was taken up in a chariot slash UFO. Read. Uh, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly uh, toward oh, heaven, the as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Mm -hmm. Uh, which also said, ye men of Galilee. Oh, which are angels. Go ahead. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Exactly. So he coming in, 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 in a similar manner. He came, he, he left in the chariot, he coming back in the chariot. Mm -hmm. This is one of the ones I call for. Read them. Read the ones I call for. Then we grab. We grab what you got. It's Revelation one and seven. Oh, that's okay. It's like, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Right. Even, so that's a re that's a, oh. So like go ahead. Even so, Amen. Yeah. Even so, Amen. Right. Um, amen means so. It, let it be true. Let it be done. So it is. Because that's because it is what it is. That's how it's gonna be. Right, and that's that. Let you know that reincarnation is a thing. Dealing with the um, even the ones that pierced them, right? They ain't gonna be no motherfucking skeletors and you know reanimated reanimation jutsu type shit. But in the way, <laughs> you know they're gonna be reincarnated. But uh, the scripture says, uh, he behold, he coming with clouds. That's more parabolic talk saying he coming with the UFOs, and it said every eye shall see him because look, man, the, the sky is the sky. Period. All right, the, the sky is the sky all across the earth, all across the world. You look up in the sky, it, it might be nighttime where you at, and it might be daytime across the other part. But when the Lord come back and uh, all them chariots gonna fill the skies, they, the, the, the whole world gonna see them. The same way when you watch uh, Independence Day. When you watch the first Independence Day, they was in China and they was in America and they was all communicating. They was all seeing the same thing regardless of their time zone. So that's a good illustration when they when they first came. When you watch, you, you seen Independence Day? Y'all seen Independence Day, right? Yeah. Yep. You seen Independence Day when the, when the chariots first came? Then they had the real big one. They had the real big one. Yeah. And then they was uh all the countries was communicating. Like damn, did you seeing what I'm saying? They all saw the same thing regardless of the time zone. See, that's why I said, uh, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Uh, uh, uh. Let me read that again. It says, uh, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Uh, and the one is Psalm. Psalm 101. He's called Psalm 104, I right? You, I got, you got that one? Yeah. All right, go ahead, bro. Uh, Psalms chapter 104, verse 3. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in, in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot. Who make it the cloud his chariot. So a lot of times when you go up on scriptures, 
and clouds are parabolic or metaphorical for what? Those chariots of Israel. The chariots of Yahweh Bashmah Shad. So the clouds that our Lord Yahweh Shai is coming with are what? The chariots of heaven, man, are which the angels or the hosts of heaven are inside. Yeah, it's not gonna be the flying nimbus, right? Right. Like what Goku, right? Like what the Christianity make you believe, like he's just gonna be on this cloud coming. Not saying he can't do it, but that's what the scriptures is actually talking about. And sometimes the, the, the Lord can he can do that. He can cloak he can cloak the chariot within the cloud. He can make the he can make the chariot look like the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Back here. Yeah. It's a book of uh, Isaiah chapter sixty three verse two. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thine garments like that treadeth, like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Hey, because what this is speaking of, this is a metaphor right, of the mass bloodshedding that our Lord Yahweh Shah is about to do when he comes back to destroy America, man. And because all the wickedness that has transpired in the earth in general, man, and everything y'all done to the children of Israel, and first and foremost, everything you've done to Yahweh Shah, hey, that's all got to be paid for, man. Hey, the Lord's gonna pay you back with death and destruction. Go ahead. Yeah. It says, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. So, hey, once again, man, hey, Yahweh Shai, he's he's about to spill a lot of blood, man. And when the Lord coming back, man, he ain't coming to play. Like somebody Reset. grab uh, Isaiah 66 chapter. Uh, God, God, go ahead, bring it up. This is um, second entrance. 16 chapter, chapter 12. 16 earth, chapter, verse 12? Six, 16 chapter, verse 12. Um, the earth quickened, and the foundations thereof see arise, arises. So most of the day, what's going to make the earth uh, quake, man? That nuclear destruction. Uh, earth quaking. And the foundation thereof the sea arises up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled. So there at the end of the day, man, when Yahweh Bashmi Ashai brings destruction, man, it's gonna cause major damage. And the scriptures say, well, that the earth shall roll to and fro like a drunkard. Like there's so many missiles are gonna be built in America all at once. Go ahead. And the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. For shroud is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss. It was a, at the end of the day, what the spirit of the Lord is going to control those missiles, right? To hit the mark. Right, Joel the second chapter speaks upon Somebody what? Somebody grab that. Joel the second chapter speaks upon what? That uh, uh, they shall not miss their mark, I'm paraphrasing. So hey, once those missiles launch, they're going to hit every target that Yahweh Bashmi Ashai has given for them to hit, man. The main target being America. Also, what, up, what other land is going to be destroyed, man? The land of Israel. But the difference between America and the land of Israel is that Israel is going to be built up and established as the headquarters of the uh, of the world, of Jacob's world. Whereas America is going to be destroyed forever, man. Nobody's going to inhabit it anymore. It's going to be inhabited by these various different desert animals. But as far as people, no. Yep, somebody grab Habakkuk, the third chapter, too. Who, who got the Joel? Alright, this is the book of Joel, chapter 2, starting at verse uh, 7. It's Joel 2 and 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Start a verse up. Maybe, what, what 5 say? I'm, before you read that, I'm going to read this. This is Jeremiah 50 and 25. Yahweh have opened his armory and have brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of the Lord Yahweh of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. So those weapons, those weapons, those the Lord's weapons. You know, behold, I, I, I created the smith that blew up the coals and the instrument of his work is, is, is of me, roughly paraphrasing. The Lord puts the inspiration on everybody to do what they do. And they got the movie Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer coming out if it ain't came out. You know, the Lord put the inspiration on that guy to do what he did. 
is that an armory is what it's a it's a it's a um, it's a, a basically like it's like a gun safe basically like when you like when you're in the army right and you go and check your weapon in and you and you check your weapon out the place where you do that at, it's an armor it's a, it's called an armory the, the place where the weapons is kept all right so it says uh what you uh the Esdras, right his his arrows shall not miss me I got that armory for you. Go ahead, you read it. It's armory. It says a, a supply of arms for defense or attack. Yep. A collection of available resources, a, uh, a place where arms and military equipment are stored. That, that, exactly. Keep going, Ot. All right, this is uh, the book of Joel, chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 3. It says, A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land has the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Like, so before they hit, everything gonna be fine. But after they hit, this shit gonna be fucked up. You know? Go ahead. Yeah, it says, that's, that's, that's why the scripture say what? Uh, when it shall say peace and safety, then it shall sudden destruction come. It's what? When people are able to get their, you know, uh, uh, necessary resources, when they're able to go to and fro, you know, get their needs, so on and so forth. So ultimately, you know, because they, uh, they can do that, they think that they're secure, man. And they still got their jobs, their homes, so on and so forth. But hey, once every that's why the scripture say that once the day of the Lord's gonna come as a thief in the night. Because everybody gonna be in a comfortability, they're gonna be in a uh, prosperity. Mm -hmm. And what the Lord, and He's gonna interrupt the program, so to speak. You know, with that nuclear destruction. Well, a party crash. So, yep. so verse four, it says the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of the mountain shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble, as a strong people said in battle array. Battle array. Because one thing, as you know, what? Horses are representative of what? Power. So when those missiles are launched, man, hey, what they're bringing, you know, on America is, is a great power force, man. Great destruction. Go ahead. Verse 6. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. And all faces shall gather blackness. Because there's going to be great fear in that day when uh, uh, when Yahweh Bashem uh ordains those missiles to start shooting, man. Because hey, hey, people here in America, and they've never uh, experienced anything like that. So when the Lord fully unleashes World War III, fully uh, 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 unleashes that nuclear destruction, hey, people ain't going to know what to do. And if you're not the elect man, then it's reps. Verse 7, it says, They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. So they shall not break the ranks of A. These missiles, A, when a missile shoot, man, and they're going to hit every single one of their targets, man. Uh, they're going to hit the exact target that Yahweh Bashman Hashan has ordained for them to hit. Uh, right? Uh, I got that word blackness in the Hebrew. It's uh, Pa'a Rawar. I'm just going to read the point. It says, uh, flush of anxiety. Mm. You know, so all faces shall be turned to blackness, meaning you pe people going to be panicked. You know, that that uh, that American notion that, that people just be like, they're just so fine. They just think America is just going to rebound and double back and be okay. You, they, then, then you finally going to be, you finally going to be in the right spirit, scared, you know. Yeah, we say they shall faint and all hearts shall melt. Yep, 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 yep. So you got that? What, what, faint and melt? <clears throat> this is Isaiah 13 and 6. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Look, but when you howling, man, what is that? That's a, uh, that's a scream of fear, man. And great fear is coming upon the people because what? The Lord is bringing a great destruction that has never been seen before. Just saw it right now. Verse 7, therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. Because all fans, it's like all hands should be faint. You know, faint meaning what? Growing weaker, growing weary. Because what? Also, that fear is going to take control of the people. That fear is going to consume the people in there. Because what? Once again, they have never seen something like this before. Right? It said their heart shall melt with fear. So, hey, people are also going to be having heart attacks in that day. And bugging out. But, hey, this is going to be a never-before-seen destruction. That Yahweh Bashim Yashah is bringing to America. I don't know. Alright, this back in Joel chapter 2, verse 8. 
either shall one thrust another, they shall walk every one in his path. Right, because the verse you read before said, uh, like the people in battle array, they giving you, they illustrating the missiles as, think about the Spartan formation. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody is, 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 is uh, you know, in order. You know, they they all in order. They know the target. They they're in sync with each other. The Lord said that's how these missiles. That He make an illustration how these missiles gonna be. Because look, what you got when you you know you play the little video games or you see the little different little little things. Sometimes you can counter the missiles. You know, you uh you you, you shoot a missile at it to meet it in the air before it hit. But go ahead, you got it. Hey, the Lord said, well, they, shall not, they shall not thrust one another. So, right, I think he's hey, going to read. Yeah. These missiles, man, they're not going to hit one another. Because like, once again, as we stated earlier, no point in second, that's the 16th chapter. What the Spirit of the Lord is going to be controlling those missiles, man. So ultimately, hey, the Lord intended for these missiles to hit each and every single one of their targets. That's what they're going to do, man. Go ahead, Joel 2 and 8, it says, Neither shall one thrust another, and thou shalt walk every one in his path. When they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Mm. See, like when they go to meet them, like, you know, because I, I, if I'm not mistaken, the nuclear missile defense system is set up like that to, to, to like counter them and, and meet them and make them explode before they come and hit the target. But the brother said the, the, the spirit of the Lord going to be in them. So if and when that do happen, they not going to be wounded. See, it just said, read that part again. It's, uh, it says, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Mm hmm. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the house, up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Hey, them missiles, man, they gonna be going to and fro everywhere, man. Everywhere on the land of America. Hey, hey, right here in Indiana gonna get hit, man. You know, uh, Cali gonna get hit. Chicago gonna get hit, man. Every, everywhere in America is going to get hit, man. And it's gonna be fallout. So so that, that so it's going uh, Canada gonna be fucked up a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, or a lot of bit of Mexico, and then it's gonna be a ripple of some of them little islands and shit that's close to the proximity in America, you know. And to, to further speak upon your point, that's why the scripture of Isaiah thirty four speaks about what the line of confusion. Because when this destruction come to pass, man, hey, hey, the Lord, the Lord is getting ready to mangle America so bad with these missiles. That you're not gonna be able to tell where Oklahoma is, or, or where Oregon is, or where South Dakota is, so on and so forth. Man. That's how bad this destruction is gonna be. Verse 10, it says, The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And what, and what, that's going to the effect of the nuclear destruction. Right? The sun and the moon shall not give their light, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Shining, so lucky. And that's twofold, because what, the nuclear smoke is going to cover all the light, also the wisdom is going to be rooted out of this world, man. This last one. It says, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. And what does the Lord's army or camp consist of? First and foremost, our Lord Yahweh Shai, right? Then you got the angels or the hosts of heaven. And also the missiles is also part of the Lord's army. So anything that Yahweh Bashmi Ashai is using to destroy America is all considered part of the Lord's army. Even uh, 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 even uh, what he say? I will make the he will make the creature his weapon. Uh, uh, it's gonna be men that's gonna get spiritual powers that's gonna participate in this too. Yeah, you said uh, I think so. Isaiah the forty first, forty first, forty first chapter. So I will make the uh, instrument with sharp, crushing teeth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. It says, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide? Look, it said very terrible. Now, you got to always realize the world gets weaker through age. That's what the scripture says. And that's in all shapes and forms, uh, physically, spiritually, and mentally. You know, the world is like utterly weak. So at a time where the world was strong, right, the ancient days, right, men were rugged, mental, mental fortitude. He said uh, it's the, the day of the Lord is very terrible. All right. Prophets, prophets were sick, man, when they got these visions. Because when they had these visions, it was like they were in the vision, you know? So, you ever had a bad dream and you wake up and you be kind of like still reeling from it? That ain't nothing compared to what our, our, for, our forefathers, the, the prophets witnessed. And they, 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 they wrote in this to, to, to let us know, like to, to prepare us through the spirit that, to expect these things. 
Because these people don't expect what's, what's happening to come. These people really in their mind, like everything that's going on, these people really think that this shit just, everything just gonna blow the fuck over. Yeah. And so, to, to back you up, hey, our forefathers, well, they were much stronger back then. So if, if they were stronger back then, they was feeling uh, uh, sick, you know, after seeing the visions, how much more today, well, we're actually physically going to be living those visions, man. Yeah. You laughing at me, huh? No, no. Second Ezra 16 and 17. Woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? And this is the prophet Ezra speaking. So Ezra seen the vision and he said, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? So also that's also going to what? Reincarnation, because Ezra is here today. Right? He received that vision back then, but he said, Who will deliver me in those days? Those days means a future prophecy or in the future. So Ezra knew he was gonna be back here in that time or in these times. Go ahead. Verse 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mourning, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear. But the power shall stand in fear, meaning the current rulers, because hey, with all these plagues that Yahweh Bashmi Asha is bringing to pass, hey, that's letting them know that they uh, current rulership is coming to an end, man. Somebody grab Isaiah 2. And hey, Esau, he's trying everything he can to uh, uh, hold on to his kingdom. That's why scripture says, what? The devil shall come down with great wrath. Because he knows that he has a short time, right? He knows that his kingdom is about to expire. So he's going to come with every method, every angle to get us out the way, man. It's like a Hail Mary. Yep, yep. Get us out the way and hold on to the rulership, man. I got that, I say. Yeah, you just read it, read it to it. That's going to go into your point. You start at the top. Okay, you want me to start at the top? Yes, sir. This is, uh, this is Isaiah chapter 2 in verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord, Yahweh Shimei Shai's house, shall be established in the top of the mountains. And that's, that's, that's partially happening now because everything starts with this truth, with this knowledge, you know? And then when they get manifested, that's when it's going to be Jerusalem. The Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, go be the gonna be the praise in the earth. You know, we gonna be the we gonna be the top billing. Go ahead. Because hey, also that mountain, well, we know a mountain is to be synonymous with what governments. Now, what is that government that the Lord is going to establish in His house or the house of Israel, the governing body, which we know is the 144,000, which is going to be led by our Lord Yahweh Shah. Uh, and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it and basically because the, the the brother brought out earlier you shall receive the glory of lebanon and the, the box and the fir tree shall come unto you so all nations gonna flow into it meaning we gonna get we gonna get the the the, the best that those different nations lands got to offer and also they're gonna have to come to it to you know learn like we're gonna be teaching the heathen you know we're going to be teaching the heathen the statutes, laws, and commandments, the ways of righteousness. We ain't going to be learning their ways the way our people doing it now. Jake over Jake from this nigga from motherfucking Alt Gale Gardens in Chicago, the Robert Taylor Projects, and this nigga a Muslim with a goddamn Arabic accent. This nigga more Muslim than a Muslim. Go ahead. It ain't going to be none of that. Go ahead. Verse 3. And many people shall go and say... Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the of the Lord, to the house of Yahweh, like to the house of the God of Jacob. Cause he ain't their God. We, the, 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 the Most High Yahweh, Bashim Yahshai, ain't their God. You see, see how they, this, this was. This is a future prophecy too. Let us go up to the the. Read that part again. God, it says. Y'all got your own fucking God, bro. Go ahead. Come ye. And let us go up to the to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path. Yep. For out of Zion. See, they see, they see now they're trying to force us to walk in their paths. All this wickedness that they got establishing amongst this this month, amongst other things. Anybody that, that want to disagree with that, then you're 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 shunned or you're penalized or you're punished. 
but it's gonna be the it's gonna be the opposite way around. Go ahead. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord Yahweh by Shem Shai from Jerusalem. Hey, this all prayers of a what? Does the uh, uh, the apostle Peter said what? That the according to his promise, the Lord is gonna establish a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwell the righteous. All right, when we go into the word new in the Greek means what? Kind of meaning refresh. So the Lord goes to refresh this current earth that we're living in. All right, do away with wickedness, do away with wicked rulership, and establish a kingdom in righteousness. All right, with Yahweh Shai at the head of that. All right, they got King David and the 144,000. Right, we're going to push forth the law and judge the nation, man. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. Because then we're going to continuously you know, correct the nations. So if they go off, go against the law of saying commandments, man, hey, we're going to correct them. But, hey, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashad, we're going to make sure that these nations follow the laws, man. They'll set the scripture. Under penalty of death. That's it. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Hey, what does that mean, man? No more war. So that's also proven that the people that's currently occupying our land right now are not the true children of Yahweh Bashem Yashai. Because if they were, Yahweh Shai would be there, King David would be there, there would be no uh, pride parades over there in the Holy Land, right? And righteousness would be established on the earth. But what? As we can see, none of that is happening. So that's showing you that, hey, imposters are currently occupying our land. Bastards. Says, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And hey, we're getting ready to come for World War III as we speak, so we got a problem. Once again, we got imposters in our land because the Lord said when we uh, get back in the land that we should learn war no more. But yet, here it is, we about to embark on World War III. I'm right, going to show you once again, we're going to stress this point, you know, continuously. Right, that the people who are occupying our land right now are not the true children of Yahweh Bashem Yashar. Right, and it's evident. That's it. Prophecy said the Lord would take us home himself. Not that we would travel there by plane, X, Y, and Z, so on and so forth. Man. It says, O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. In the light of the Lord means walk in his wisdom. Right? Go ahead. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be re replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines. Yeah, they be they be uh, satiated with other doctrines. They be replenished from the east, man. They into all basically meaning because the uh, uh, the wise man and all that, they was from the east, so to speak. So there's a lot of doctrines came out of the East, man. The Eastern Hemisphere, because you got to think, the world has always been populated majority on the, on the Eastern Hemisphere. So when you go into them different philosophies, Zoroastrianism, uh, Taoism, Taoism, those are all different Eastern philosophies. And that's what replenishes our people, man, these various different false doctrines. Even now and even in back in that day. And in Isaiah's day. Go ahead. Uh, if I may add, it says uh, in Isaiah the 30th chapter, it says, uh, what Jake said, uh, pro prophesy unto a smooth finger. It's kind. You know, pro uh, pro uh, prophesy deceits. Yep. You no, know, that was, you know, Jake, Jake just want to hear uh, smooth things, you know? Yeah, because the majority of Jake, they don't want to hear America is going to get destroyed. You know, certain things are going to happen. Because what? They comfortable here in America. And they comfortable in their wicked lifestyle. So when you tell them, hey, the Lord is coming back to destroy this place, what is Jake saying? Nah, I don't want to hear that. They you nigga don't know what he's talking about, so on and so forth. My 401k. Yeah, my 401k. My, my stimulus check. You know, but hey, the Lord, hey, that, none of that shit matters to the Lord, man. Prophecy is going to stand, whether you like it or not. Because, hey, the book of Romans says what? For what if some did not believe? Shall that make the faith of Yahweh without effect? Yahweh forbid. Right? Let, man, let God be true in every man alive. That's six. Because at the end of the day, the counsel of Yahweh Bashem Yashai or the word of Yahweh Bashem Yashai is going to come to pass. Whether you believe it or not. Second, I said. 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'll finish it right here. It says, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Yep. Go ahead. There's more, though. Keep reading. Uh, because it's, 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 it's going to come back around to the point the brothers make. Uh, they please themselves in strangers, basically getting up into them other people's cultures, getting up into other people's culture, man, doing what they do. And the Lord's... Yeah, and the Lord expressly told us, look, man, do not inquire about uh, these other nations, how they serve their other gods and do shit. And that, hey, that's what the Lord was telling us when we was uh, getting ready to take the Holy Land. The Lord said, hey, don't don't observe how these other nations serve their gods and apply it to how you serve me, roughly paraphrasing. Because, hey, these, these nations, you know, because specifically during that time, we was doing what? Who? We were dealing with who? The Canaanites. There was a uh, passing their children in the fire to Molech. Right, doing all kinds of wickedness. So the Lord was like, hey, don't do none of that, man. You got it all. Damn, I ain't seen the fight with pigs in a minute. <laughs> it says, uh, Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 7, their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. It says their, their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. And the mean mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Yeah, the, the, the regular dude and the, and the rich dude. Mean, mean, average. So they so all these people, you know. Regardless of their status of life is, is, is into idol worship. Read. Therefore forgive them not. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust. For fear of, of the Lord, Yahweh by Shim Shai. Okay, so somebody grab uh Amos 9 and 1. Come. Amos 9 and 1, I think maybe verse 2. Not you, brother. Yeah. Okay. But read keep reading. Because it said for read that part again. It says, Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord Yahweh by Shin Yahweh Shai. Right, because when the Lord come back, he coming back to, 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 to judge, right? He coming back to make war. Like Revelation says, in righteousness do we make war, right? For all the, for all the wickedness that's going on on earth, the Lord gonna come back and bring water to this place. Everything is upside down, man, all right? But you got these things, people got bunkers and shit, right? Because that is, these people know something going on. Even your average Edomite, you know, they got their bunkers for, you know, the average people, they got their little bunkers or their little cellars for, uh, you know, for the famine. You know, they paying attention to the news for the famine or when shit hit the fan and, and everybody started coming. What up, brother? Is everybody? All right. And everybody started coming up. Uh, you know, uh, people start spoiling each other for the lack of bread. But it's more than that. See, the elites know. All right. They know. Somebody who got the, uh, you got it? Go ahead. The point you want is in two, but I'm going to start at verse one. Kind. This is the book of Amos, chapter nine, verse one. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, smite the lintel of the door that the post may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them, and I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Yeah, ain't nowhere to, oh, uh, what's that? Ain't nowhere to hide. When, when the Lord is calling your name. Go ahead. It says, though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Right, so hell is, is, not a, is not this place that you people think it is. You can't dig into hell, right? Hell is supposedly a realm. How are you going to dig into a realm? But when you look up hell, uh, one of the definitions of it is subterranean retreat. So what's a subterranean retreat? Subterranean means under earth, and the retreat, what? It's a bunker, right? So though you dig into hell, Though you go into your subterranean retreat, though you go into your bunker to escape the Lord, read. It says, then shall mine hand take them. So this, uh, uh, somebody grab uh, uh, the scripture where it says, it might be this one. He shall search them out of every rock, or is that Ezekiel? Type in uh, search and rock. Go ahead. It says, though they climb up to heaven, then will I bring them down. Right, because they also trying to have uh, little, little space station bunkers too. All right. So wherever you had, because they know the earth gonna, they, they they know the earth gonna be destroyed. They think they gonna escape the destruction. No, you read that real quick and then you grab what you got. Uh, this is uh, 
Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Right, because we fishing now. This, this truth is the bait. You can't, you can't, uh, every fish don't, 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 don't take your bait. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's, the, it's only the elect. Righteous fish, not no catfish, not no swine, not no goddamn uh, 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 mud puppies or whatever the fuck, right? Something with fins and scales, right? Good old red snapper, perch, you know? This truth is the bait, and we out here preaching, we out here fishing. What we gonna get, we gonna get the elect, read. Today when Yahweh Shai came to gather some of his disciples, uh, specifically uh, Peter and his brother Andrew, what did he say? Come with me and I'll make you fishers of men. Yeah. Now, you know when you when you fishing on the boat, you cast that you cast that big ass net. Mm -hmm. That net grabs up everything, yep. and then once you get on the boat, then you got to sort it out. You're like, nah, this crab, throw the crab back. You throw the, the fuck around, have a dolphin. Throw the dolphin, you know. Go ahead. It says, and they shall fish them, and after I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill. Right, so look, it's all a part of the Lord's army. The Lord's army is the missiles, the Yahweh Shah, the angels, and the chariots, the, 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 the men that he's going to endow with spiritual powers to execute his will. All right, because you people, you at least that's going in there, you're going to be hunting out of there. Well, read, read what it say. God, it says, and they shall hunt them from every mountain. And yeah, from, from every, every hill, from every, from every government, every because different all them all them elites is in, in cahoots, man. Regardless of how they beef, regardless how these different nations, different countries beef or whatever, the elites of those different nations and countries is all under the the, the thumb of them ish folks. All right, the IMF people, the the, the the elite banking family people, and they got they bunkers and they land set up and all type of little escape routes and all that. So all you different mountains with you major governments and you different hills, you little small, you little Singapore and you little bitty small people who trying to have your little uh, uh, foothold into the, the NWO under the thumb of the elites. You all going to be hunted out, man. You all going to be got. You all going to be got. Read. It's more. God. It says, and out of the holes of the rocks. And out of the holes of them bunkers. Uh, the book of Revelation. And no bunkers deep, man. They got shit. They got cities. They got cities underground, man. They got cities under there. They got they, they got it all mapped out. They got the cities. They got the the, the, the people who gonna be the workers, the the, uh, 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 the slaves, if you will, because they ain't not they not gonna just be under there uh, doing shit themselves. No, they gonna be under there. They gonna have their little servants, they slaves with them, who gonna be working and doing everything too, man. That's it. Like they had the one guy that the, 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 the drove the semi truck, he he basically stumbled, he basically kind of like stumbled across like some underground shit. He like what? Maybe I don't know if y'all saw that about a, a, a year or two ago, semi truck driver. He stumbled on, on on the underground city. He like what the fuck is, what's going on? And it, and it was going for miles, man. And he filmed. He like what the fuck? like what the hell? Go ahead. You got more on that? No. Oh no, it's on. This is uh, Revelation chapter 6, beginning at verse 15. It says, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, it says, And the rich men, and chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every freeman, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains, That's beautiful. And said to the mountains, and rocks. Because it said bondmen and freemen, it's going to be slaves, it's going to be they, they workers, they work the slaves down there. Them people that just eat up everything these fucking this this this, this uh government say, man. Them people that eat up everything, man. We don't question shit. Y'all gonna be down there, slaves. And you're gonna be had in derision. Like the scripture in the second Ezra said, it says, they that consider them shall be had in derision. So that ain't gonna be you ain't gonna fucking escape. You're gonna be confounded. Got more. Yeah, it says uh, verse 16 and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Exactly. So, hey, at the end of the day, hey, these are kings of these various different nations, man. They're going to try to hide in these bunkers, man, and try to escape the wrath of Yahweh Bashem Yashai. But hey, you can't escape the wrath of Yahweh Bashem Yashai. Because ultimately, the Lord is going to put the Spirit on his men 
to drag y'all out, man. Right? The Lord said what? By his hand shall he drag you out of hell. He's gonna drag you out of those bunkers, man. So, hey, hey, the Lord is really the one that's making you out of those bunkers. Because what? Scripture say what? A uh, uh, man's going to the Lord. And pretty much, in the grand scheme of things, the Lord is saving y'all as the first fruits of slavery under the Israelites. So, either way, man, y'all can't escape. Yep. Yeah, whatever y'all got, let them. Uh, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 31, verse 3. Now the Egyptians are men and not God, mm. and their horse is flesh and not spirit. Yeah, their power is flesh, meaning that it, it, it's faulty, meaning that it's, it's not everlasting. See, the shit that the shit that Esau eat them, the Americans, the, 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 the Caucasians, these other heathens, the thing that they rely on is not infallible. Oh, we, oh, we got AI. We got all that, man. All that shit is fucked. Uh, uh, EMP rolled through. All this shit based off energy and electricity. You take all that shit away, then what? It's corruptible. I mean, yeah, all it, uh, exactly. All this shit is corruptible. It, 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 it got to be maintenanced. That's what it, that, your power is, is. Your horses ain't. It's flesh and not spirit. If flesh, if earthly, that shit got to be maintenanced. And it break down with time. But yet, yet, hey, yet, our people trust in this shit, man. Um. <laughs> hey, that's the pride of America. Oh, we got the F1 of Abrams, we got the, got that tank, the, the armored tank, so on and so forth. This, then the third. And what you gonna do when that motherfucker run out of? You gotta put gas in that motherfucker. <laughs> shit, that, mess, that that missile or that laser beam from the chariot is not waiting for you to refill that tank with gas, man. <laughs> shit, hey, so, hey. <laughs> Yo, ass is grass, man. You need to, you gotta change the brake, the rotors and shit. You gotta change the brakes, make some put transmission fluid in it and shit. They, they, then they, that shit create jobs. You be having uh, uh, aviation mechanics and oh, yeah. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah. Hold on, don't blow me up yet. I gotta refill on gas. Like the brother, look, he cut the breakers off and shit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man, oh, come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Yeah. When it says when Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth mm. shall fall, and he that hoping shall fall shall fall down. And they all shall fall together. Damn. Hey, script, because the script say what? Though, uh, though hand join a hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. Because hey, if you siding with this devil man, if you siding with Esau, Edom, so-called white race, you're against Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. Because <coughs> and yourself. That's it. <coughs> excuse me. Because what? This is a nation whom Yahweh Bashmi Ashai has indignation, a righteous anger forever against man. Yeah. Wisdom of Solomon. Oh, Book of Wisdom of Solomon speaks about they that hold to his side do find death. Mm -hmm. You know? Because, hey, you know, hey, two thirds of my people, they look to, to, uh, to Esau eat him as their God, man. Uh, what was that uh, during the last election? What was that Taraji P. Henson? Save us, Joe Biden! Save us! Are right, you putting your trust in men and not in Yahweh Bashmi Ashai? And also, hey, that's going that's going to move the Lord to wrath because you choosing you choosing to serve men over Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. In Jeremiah 17, what's that? Mm -hmm. Just curse be the man uh, that trusted in men yep. and make it flesh his arm, mm -hmm. for he shall be like the heap that perish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I could uh, jump to one. Yeah. It's the Isaiah 30, 31 and 1. It says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help mm. and stay on horses. And well, we know that we know that we in, well, we in spiritual Egypt. We in spiritual Egypt pursuant to what? To, to the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. Because what? Egypt is synonymous or symbolic of our bondage, our hardcore bondage. And here in America. The witchcrafts. Say, yep. Here in America. <coughs> We serve the hardcore bondage. So also, hey, we're standing in spiritual Egypt as we speak. All right, also, hey, what two thirds of our people, they're going down to Egypt for help, and they're not going to Yahweh Bashem Yashai for help. They're leaning more on their 401k, stimulus checks, so on and so forth to take care of them, and rather than for Yahweh Bashem Yashai to take which, care of them. Which Esau is in control of, and he can take that at any point in time he wants. So you ultimately, no matter how you slice it, you trust it in the devil. But the scripture says uh, in Isaiah the 10th chapter, uh, we will no, no longer be stayed upon him that smote us, man. Stay upon the uh, Holy One of Israel. Exactly, in truth. in truth. 
and trust in chariots because they are many. No, dude, this nigga put billions of dollars into the, this military defense, right? Because when you read, look, because look, it's, it's, a, it's a physical aspect and it's a spiritual aspect to the scriptures. Around this time, around this time, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that was that was literal. All right, we had made the pact with Egypt uh, against Syria because we was beefing with we was beefing with Syria, and then we went and was like, okay, we going we going Egypt. We was gonna trust in Egypt, right? But then, but then the prophet rebuked the king and said, look, the Lord didn't tell you to go down there and make no agreement with them Egyptians, right? And then the Egyptians end up end up uh, faltering on the agreement. They end up not coming through. See, that was the that was the that, that was a physical thing back then. See, but now spiritually, it's a, it's it's applied to um, like the brother brought out. Uh, America is spiritually uh, 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 Egypt, right? And and now our people are in that same stead. See, there's nothing new under there's nothing new under the sun, man. But hey, even back then during the time of Egypt, we well, had Jacob murmuring against the Alba Bashmi Ashai, murmuring against Moses. It was like, hey, we would have rather stayed in Egypt than be brought out here. And that's the mindset of Jake today, man. They'd rather stay here in the rest. Hey, like the uh, spoke upon in uh, Isaiah the 30th chapter, earlier, right? The Lord said that what? They would rather stay uh, upon oppression, right? They don't want to come back to the law, studies, commandments, say Yahweh, Bashim, Yashai. They don't want to lean upon the Holy One of Israel, man. They want to continue to lean upon this devil, man. Trust in what he got. Right. Right. Not knowing that the Lord is about to do away with all of that, man. Yeah. Our people don't want to go through the straits. That's it. That's why when you read 2nd Ezra, it says what? The city is building, mm -hmm. right? But before it is danger. If you don't go past the danger, you can't get to it. Mm -hmm. So the kingdom of heaven and it, 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 what it takes to get there, it's a it's a challenge. But it can't compare. It can't compare, man. It can't compare to uh, 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 th this present life. Like it's like it's more than more than worth it. Like Paul was saying, I have not seen or I have not heard what the Lord got prepared for His service. What the paraphrase? You talking about not you? St you st man, go ahead. Hey, to add a point of point, because hey, going to straits, man. Even that same chapter, man. Hey, all of Jacob's gonna go through straits anyway. Because uh, first down that chapter says what? That many shall uh, go through the strait and hope for the wide. Then there be those that shall uh, go for the uh, straight, go through the strait and not see the wide. So either way, man, we gonna go through straits, man. That position of difficulty, right? And also, hey, it's better to suffer for righteousness, right? This is than to suffer for wickedness, man. They are, it says, uh, they are many, uh, and it says, there are many, and in horsemen, because they they are very strong. I would like the brother was mentioned, naming the different weapons, uh, the, the different, you know, uh, uh, vehicles with different weapons on them. Oh, here we got the, the, the Abrams and the Stealth and all this different, man, whatever. It was, a, it, was a, uh, it was a YouTube short. I don't remember the guy's name, but he was listening off the I think I've seen that. Pretty much, he was saying like, "Why, why the West will never fall?" Yep. I, mean, I seen that the Edomite. He, he was stealing all that crowd bullshit. But hey, you must not read Revelation the 18th chapter, because y'all can have all that shit, man. Y'all can have y'all can have all these planes, all these chopper gunners, all these helicopters, man, all these submarines, all this military equipment. But the Lord is going to eradicate that shit in one hour, man. One hour. If I may, you know, Esau Edom is, is so proud. Or he, you know, uh, in believing in, in his technology, or he thinks he can go up against a, a, a power that can defy the laws of physics, man. You know, time. A, 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 a chariot can uh, 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 appear in front of a jet, you know, disappear, go right behind him, you know, do all types of maneuvers, you know, that that are uh, uh, a thousand times, you know, an infinity times advanced than, than, uh, than what Esau Edom has. Because because uh, what Esau Edom has is, is limited, man. All right? The, the scriptures talks about the uh, 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 the Lord the Lord has uh, set up bounds that he cannot pass. That's it. You know? And, hey, even, it's been, hey, that, that one clip, I know y'all seen it, uh, the clip of the turret gunner and shooting at the chariot. Gone. But not a single bullet hit. But here it is. You talking about when it was like a big ass <laughs> Light the chair is like yeah. a light, gun, gun. and it was like just lazily dodging. Running, it went, it just it looked trying. like it was playing. We was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Hey, the angel was in there, like, oh, when this nigga gonna hit me? <laughs> Never see, but you got stuff like that 
And Esau is still proud, but hey, we know what? That he's, that the Lord Yahweh Bashmashai is hard in this man's heart. Just on. like he did with ancient Pharaoh, because what is the Lord Yahweh Bashmashai getting ready to do? Show his power, man. Getting ready to show this world that, hey, this nigga Esau ain't shit, man. I gave him his technology. Right. Cool. It says, because they are, they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Hey, that's two thirds. That's two thirds of our people to the people. They don't look to Yahweh Bashem Yashai. Right? They look to Esau for the struggle, man. They look to Esau to solve their problem, man. They don't come to Yahweh Bashem Yashai who was for them, man. Right? They don't go to their father, man. They don't go to their big brother and seek counsel. Right? Seek advice. They rather go to this uh, to Esau, even the so-called white. Man. Yeah, they don't go to the prophets. That's it. And therefore, because two thirds of our people have chosen this devil. Over here, how about you got shot? Hey, the Lord said, you know what? Y'all can go ahead and die along with him. I right, said, you trusting this man so much. Go ahead and die along with Esau, even the so-called white man. Low hands join the hands, the wicked shall not go punish. That's it, huh? Last verse. It says, yet, verse 2, Isaiah 31, verse 2. It says, yet also, yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words but will arise against the house of the evildoers mm. and against the hit and against the help of them that work iniquity mm. hey first and foremost hey this destruction is uh for esau even so called white man i right, what did the lord also say in the book of amos chapter 9 that the sinners of his people shall die by the sword all the sinners of my people yep. shall die by the sword that's yep. it because you want to join hand in hand with this devil oh no help forward his cause. The Lord wants to make you partake in that destruction, man. Somebody grab that. Cause that's gonna matter of fact I'll grab it. Yeah, Amos 9. Because it's gonna say something that's you know it's a, it's a, it's around uh still on the point. It's uh Amos 9 and uh 10 it says all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. You know what that is right there, man? That is a, a proud mindset. You know, a lot of Jake, they don't think that the destruction is coming, man. They don't think that Yahweh Shai is coming to destroy this place. Uh, what's that, the second second Peter, the third chapter? Talk about the mockers who were like, uh, where's uh, where the promise of his coming? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Just the fathers fell asleep. The Alabans yeah. continue. Yeah. So this is um, this is the book of Second Peter, chapter 3, uh, verse 3. It says, know this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Yeah, we in those last days, man. Go ahead. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? Mm -hmm. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. You know so, hey, they think the Lord is resting. They think the Lord is oblivious to everything that's going on. But hey, that's, that's a display you know, of, of uh, two-thirds of our people's unbelief, man. They don't truly believe that Yahweh Shah is coming. What do they say, man? They all oh, y'all been saying the Messiah is coming for, for 10, 20. Since my grandma then. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all right. been saying this the last day since my grandma then. Right. And also, hey, because what we on Yahweh Bash Yah Shah's time. Man. So hey, the scriptures say what that no man knoweth the uh, day or the hour, but but Yahweh in heaven. That's what Yahweh Shah said. Not even Yahweh Shah knows when he's coming uh. back. All, right, all Yahweh Shah knows that, hey, when Yahweh says, go, son, that's it. Yeah, that's when, that's when the Lord's going to unleash all uh, hell and chaos in America. Man. Which should let you know that those are two different entities. Yeah. Thank you. Thank two you. Two, two, two. Two, and and Yahweh Shah left us this truth with these prophecies to let us know that it was getting near. He said, when you see these things coming to pass, then know that I am near. That's right. it. So we don't know the exact. But it's like, well, damn, it, well, damn, all of this is happening. It got to be close. There's only so much more wickedness that can happen because the wickedness coincides with the return of the Lord. It got to, it, it, the wickedness got to fulfill a certain measure. Right. So we see what's happening now. The last, like, with these kids and this, this whole little uh, June, I'll call it June, this June agenda, right? We see, like, what more can they really do? It's like, the, that's like really one of the last things is them, them kids and the, and, the, and, the, and the MOT to the B. Get to get them, get, uh, freak off on them kids, 
and and the MOT to the beat, man. It ain't a whole lot of shit left that can really happen. Like you said, wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Yep, and that hopeful works off the field. Yep. Just like, <coughs> excuse me, just like during the time of Genesis, during the time of Noah, the Lord said what? That wickedness was great in the earth, so that his spirit should not always strive with men. Right? And that word strive was it's like it. That word strive means to basically plead with you to do right. See, that's what we're doing right now. When you go to Proverbs, the first chapter, it says, Behold, I will make my words known unto you. See, now you now it ain't no excuse because it's being known. And he said, I've stretched out my hand unto you, and you have set my counsel at naught. So this the Lord's uh, this the Lord's spirit striving with me now. He said, I'm not gonna always do that. I'm not gonna always plead with you to do the right thing so I don't F you up. You know, it's a beautiful point you brought that up. You know, strive meaning a uh, plea with them to do the right thing. And like you quoted earlier, you know, Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, that there is no new thing under the sun. But well, history is repeating itself, right? When you fast forward to today, 2nd Ezra 15 chapter says what? What did the Lord say? He said, therefore, I will no longer hold my tongue as concerning their wickedness. Meaning, hey, the Lord, he get, the Lord is already tired of this shit, right? Real talk. But it's going to come a point in time where, you know, Judgments are just, just going to start going forth, man. And judgments are going forth every day, man. Every morning, does he bring his judgments to light? But it's going to, the Lord is going to amp it up to a level never seen before, man. Nothing our hearts can think of. Um, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm at 2nd 15. Okay, okay. Start at the top. Jeez, start at the top. Okay, okay. Was he holding something? Was holding Look, 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 just go off. Yeah, you grab that. Look, look, look. that 15. Yeah. Banger, banger. This is Isaiah 30 and 1. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord. Read Thank louder, you. brother. Isaiah 30 and 1. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover what they cover, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Because, hey, the rebellious children are going to two thirds of my people. Are right, y'all not under the covering of the spirit of uh, spirit of Yahweh Bashmi Asha? Because well, y'all not following after his righteousness, y'all not seeking him, y'all not being obedient to him. Instead, y'all under the covering of Esau, even so-called white man. That's who y'all trust in. Right, but if you read that latter part here. And that cover what they covering, but not of my spirit, mm -hmm. that they may add sin to sin. That they may add sin to sin, which you know is what? Iniquity. Because what? In these times, man, Jake. It's comfortable in their wicked lifestyle. They don't want to give up pork, man. They don't want to give up uh, committing adultery to the next man's wife. They don't want to give up uh, smoking blunts. You know, this, that, and the third, man. They don't want to give up wickedness in general. Right? So ultimately, hey, the Lord is like, okay, you don't want to take heed? Now I got judgment for you. That goes into the elder Demasha part. He speaks about people choose uh, their God or their faith or their belief off what they can get away with. Mm -hmm. So I said, they, uh, they, they cover themselves with 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 an alternate covenant that they may add sin under sin, see? Oh shit! I'm a, I'm gonna be this because we can do this and we can do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into this because we can do this and we can do that. Hey, because unlike these other various different false philosophies, doctrines, and religions, hey, the truth holds you accountable, man. And a lot of our people don't want to be held accountable. They have become that, effectively God. women. Yep, that's it. Mainly the women. But you got you know men among our nation who act like these women. Hey, okay. uh, if you go to that word rebellious, re meaning again, rebellious uh, going into uh, to make war. Yep. So mm -hmm. Kyle, yep. yep. Hey, hey. So so Jake, hey, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, I right? y'all constantly at war with with the heavenly Father, man. That's Cause y'all don't want to get right with uh right with with this law, statutes, and commandments, man. Yep. All right, right y'all comfortable? All right, uh, uh being in this uh, 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 uh wicked society. All right, where, where Esau Edom pretty much uh, let, lets you commit all manners of wickedness. All right, and you're comfortable with that, man. Mm -hmm. All right, you actually, you uh, Jake like actually likes to live a, a wicked lifestyle, man. Yeah. No. No accountability. Right. So they 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 want nothing to do with the spirit of uh, and power of Yahweh by shooting out shot. All right. Yeah. Like you brought up earlier, keep the Holy One of Israel away from us. As, this is Isaiah 30 and 2 that walk to go down into Egypt mm. and, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Because right, like what? Once again, uh, us being here in spiritual Egypt, North America, Jake is seeking out for these presidents, man. 
You're not seeking after Yahweh Bashmashah. You're seeking after the counsel of uh, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, so on and so forth, Donald Trump. Right? But they're not seeking the counsel of Yahweh Bashmashah. And if Jacob knew any better, what the law <clears throat> in Deuteronomy 17 chapter says what? That you're not supposed to set a king over yourself, which is of another nation. Uh -huh. Right? So you're worshiping this devil as your king, man. You're going off. Are you going off, man? You're supposed to be seeking after Yahweh Bashim Yashad. Seeking after the council of Yahweh Bashim Yashad. Not seeking to these presidents, these leaders of America, right, for all your struggles, man. Because also, hey, these leaders of America, they don't care about Jake, man. All this legislation that's being pushed forth, all these uh, various different meetings they have, it's all to uh, 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 make the oppression of Jake worse. But, hey, Under uh, the guise that they're helping them. Yep. Hey, but two thirds of our people don't see that, man. They'd rather stay on the pressure. Verse, verse 3. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, mm. and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. So when, when the Lord, you know, brings these plagues to pass and brings destruction to pass, and you see that this man cannot save you, that his military cannot save you, y'all going to be ashamed for trusting in this devil, man. Hell, this military going to be stomping your ass out. That's it. The martial law. So you gonna be you gonna be double you gonna be double fucked up. Mm -hmm. okay, that, hey, that's what that's where uh, Marshall Law is. Done. Second. Oh, we gotta go second. Done. This is uh the book of Second Ezra, chapter fifteen and verse one. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. It says, speak in the ears of my people. All right, my people will be a possessor. Meaning, hey, this message is for who? The Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But at the end of the day, what? Only the elect is going to receive this message. And the Lord said, what? Speak in his people, speak in the ears of his people, the words of prophecy. Prophecy, prophecy or prophesy means what? To say before. All right, so we're telling you of World War III, before it comes to pass. We're telling you of the mandatory MOTV, before it comes to pass. All right, we're telling you of Jacob's trouble before it comes to pass, right? But once again, hey, majority of our people, they don't want to listen. Man. Go ahead. I have a quick one. Okay. Ezekiel 13 and 5. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of Yahweh. And, and hey, what's that going into, man? These false prophets who are keeping our people in a spirit of slumber, not warning them of the evil days to come, right? prophesying unto them things that make them feel good. They're not warning their congregation about Jacob's trouble, man. They're not warning the congregation of all the plagues and all the evils that's coming to pass. Right? They're, they're not, hey, like the scriptures say, like the scriptures speak about what, the house is better to be in the house of mourning than the house of feasting. They're in the house of feasting. Right? They're all about having fun, feeling the lust of the flesh. But hey, us, man, we in the house of mourning because what, we hate it here in America. Right? Life here in America is, 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 is trash, man. Right, and we want the Lord to come save us up out of here, man. Ultimately, hey, what? Ultimately, we're in the house of mourning because well, we know how things are supposed to be. We know we know shit's not supposed to be like this, man. But hey, scriptures say what well, that the earth is given to the hands of the wicked. So it is supposed to be like this, but this is the Lord showing us that hey, this man is is, is not a good ruler, man. He saw the so-called white man is not a good ruler. Because he hey, he doesn't apply the law studies and say, yeah, I will bash me out shot in this land. He applies his wickedness. And that's why we got to prophesy because the, 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 that's what's going to help the people to stand. You know, that's why you, you harp on the, we harp on the MOT to the B, all right, which is the basically the CHIP that you're going to need to, to, to buy and sell and participate. That's why we harp on Jacob's trouble that this guy, your enemy, he hates you. He's going to finally show you that in the times to come. He's going to be forced to, you know, to what? To let you know well to, to uh for the hope to prepare the hopeful elect you know when it says uh going into the gaps and all that to build up the house of israel it's going into construction man sometimes you got to tuck point the building so that so the building don't decay tuck point it is you, you mix up some cement and you fill in the gaps see this is a house you the, the this is a spiritual house and they, they, they that's the you know the lord using a, a physical reference to show you look you got to build it up you know what i'm saying it give you rolled it you know, you got to look, you got to, hold on, you got to fill in that gap, you got to fill that in and, you know, 
and hey, further down in uh, Ezekiel the 13th chapter goes into what uh, untempered mortar, right? Meaning these prophets or these false prophets, they're building a house, they're building their house or their congregation with the uh, uh, material, right? That needs constant attention. And if, yeah. if you don't attend to it, ultimately it's all gonna fall apart. So ultimately, that can be likened to what these uh, uh, false prophets building their congregation with, with these wayward false doctrines. Yeah, it is. Such as uh, 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 the new moon and the full moon. Right, saying you can have sex on a Sabbath. No, no Jacob's trouble. Right, no Jacob's trouble. They even say Jacob's trouble is gay. Mot to mot to the B is sin. It's June. It's June. Ain't no Mike. Yeah, it's no. June. <laughs> yeah, another example, just to back up what you're saying. A good example is like the roads. Yeah. You know, you said instead of doing one quick work, you know, the fault these people would teach falsely. They just give you some patchwork. And then when the rain and the storm, the actual yeah. storm come, it boom, all the holes and everything Pot has been revealed. It come shit. right, it come right, and then that's why I said unte untempered more. Untempered mean it ain't balanced. When you get the mixing that cement, you gotta have the right amount of right. cement, and then it's the right amount of the. I did it before, so uh, you got the right amount of cement. It's like another material, the right amount, and then it's the right amount of water. That when you actually put it in the gaps, yeah. it'll be it'll be uh, uh, solid enough to, to, to remain and, 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 and stay. And when it harden up, it won't be moved. If you put too much water, it go in there. And when it harden up, it don't be hard enough to, to mesh, so it falls out. Yep. And so that's what cracks and stuff. Like that. And that's what these doctors in when it when it when it's when it's time for it to 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 to, to withstand the, the the shit that come. It ended up not not being it, it wasn't tempered enough, it wasn't balanced enough that it could stand up to the to the to to the you know the um the troubles that come, you know. To back that up, somebody grab us either Matthew the seventh chapter or Luke the seventh chapter, and we're talking about the foundation of the sand. I'm in Matthew seven. All right, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse uh, 24. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon rock, upon a rock. And also, hey, what? A rock represents what? A strong foundation. Now, what? We know what that, you know, also the rock or that chief's cornerstone is who? Yahweh shot. Uh, scripture speak upon what? Being uh, firmly established and rooted in Yahweh shot. To us, we're building our foundation upon Yahweh Shah, following after Yahweh Shah's example, man. That's right. Go ahead. It says, and the rains descended, and the and the floods came, and the winds blew. Yeah, the trouble, right? Yep. Good, 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 good time. And going to like what? The, the, the persecution, the time of Jacob's trouble, man, any kind of affliction, man. Yeah. Because hey, because these individuals are firmly rooted and established in Yahweh Shah, because their foundation is built upon a rock, and hey, those winds, no storms, man, it's not gonna knock them over. Says, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Mm. Go ahead. It says, and every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto, unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. Which is what? An unstable foundation, because hey, once, once the winds and the storms come, it's going to blow all that sand away, and what? The house is going to fall, man. Go ahead. Yeah, you build a sand castle, that bitch could be fire. That motherfucker gonna last. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that breeze gonna come through. Oh, yeah. shit. Anything, a fucking bird will come, a fucking high any tide. crap. High tide. Yeah, the high, yeah, 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 the high tide. You know, you be building when you little, you never really get the finished building. You keep going further and further away. Like, nah, you ain't gonna fuck this one up. Right. It's eventually gonna get it, man. Oh, no, that was, uh, I don't know if brothers remember, uh, like, like uh, we were y younger, they they were probably they told us about that story like in school about the, the three little pigs. Yeah, 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 yeah. When, yeah. Uh, when, when the wolf came to, to blow the, the wind, you had the uh, the pigs that built their uh, house out of sand. Uh, what was the other one? I think it was like, straw, straw, straw uh, some other shit. Brick, brick was the last one. Oh, yeah, brick was the last one. yeah. I the first one. Yeah, they had some gems in these kids' books. <laughs> no, them kids, yeah. Well, well, well. The kid books we grew up yeah, off yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Now they learning. Uh, anyway, Shit, I ain't even fucking saying. Yeah, I, I already know where he was going. With yeah. You. Today they is on, they on some other shit. Oh man. That's a good point though. They, oh, I man. think I, I want to say hey, 
straw and hay yeah. or, or, or sticks and hay or some shit. Yes. Yeah, but then, a, then the one. last brother is, is the brick. God. <laughs> you know, or, or in other words, rock. You know. God. It's back in Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 27. It says, And the rain descended, and the floods came. I'm going to start back at 26. It says, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Hey, when those persecutions come, when those afflictions come, man, hey, it's going to pretty much break up those congregations, which the false prophets are leading, because you telling, you telling your uh, congregation that well, the MOTB is sin, right? That's not getting them ready. Because, hey, man, common sense will, will, will uh, have you ask, how the hell can you uh, not buy or sell with sin? Like, what sense does that make? If you're telling your congregation that there's not going to be no Jacob's trouble, you putting your congregation in a, 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 a comfortable, you know, a, a, a secure mindset. Sure. Where when it actually hits the fan, man, they not gonna be ready. I got one too. So that's why, you know, they, hey, the Lord, the Lord is gonna break up these false congregations, all these congregations that's not, you know, dealing with the truth, man. With these false prophets such as IEYC, ISUBK, GOCC, all of that, man. You know, anybody that's not coming in truth and sincerity, to you, how about you, Shah? The Lord is going to break that shit up, man. All right, I got that. Just wanted to bring it up. So yeah, trying to figure it out. Pig. I saw you yeah. looking too. <laughs> three little pigs. It says, "Once oh. upon a time, just real quick. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. One built, one pig built a house of straw, while the second built uh, his house of with sticks. Uh, they built their houses very quickly, and then sang and danced all day because they were lazy." Yeah. <laughs> the third hey, little pig. That, hey, that, that's uh, <laughs> hey, like like uh, we quoted earlier. You know, uh, these false prophets, man, in their congregation, they were they in the house of mourning. Feasting. Like, yep. Yeah, feasting. the house of feasting, feasting. feasting. like you slip of the tongue. But hey, like you like you just brought out in the three little pigs, they was dancing, with joy, all that shit. You no, know, hey, those lazy. who are in the, yeah, yeah lazy. No, hey, hey, false. Hey, these false prophets are lazy. They're not out here on the highways and byways like the apostles, the elders, the great millstone, the elders, bishops. Like brothers are putting them in season, out of season. Yeah, they, they seasonal Israelites. Fair weather Israelites. Mm -hmm. so, yep. oh, we only coming out when the sun is out. But shit, when it's snowing, we staying home cozy up. But the Lord, the Lord through Apostle Paul said, what? Be instant in season, out of season. So also we're not in a time knowing what's coming down in the pipe. We're not knowing what's coming down the pipeline. We're not in a time to be in the house of feast, uh, uh, trying to have fun going to bars and clubs, having all these various different parties, right? Because while you're doing that, this man Esau is passing legislation and, uh, and about to make more moves on you, man. Now, now, and just to back you up, we, you know, you will go have a drink. Right. Yeah, you might yeah. step out for a little yeah. bit. You fellowship but, with the brothers. And things yeah, like but that's not, our whole, that's not our whole mindset. Our whole mindset is, is getting right, staying right with your high about shot. To the best of our ability. You know, we, we don't we don't you know be posting you know uh, uh, videos on YouTube, the bus uh, uh, drinking, right. uh, 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 having fun, fellowshipping amongst each other. Last last part. It says the third little pig worked hard all day and built his house with bricks. Mm. Worked hard all day. I saw hey, he he endured to the end. He he can he continue that work. And he reaped the he reaped the reward of his labor. That's, That's right. it. Which is which is which is which is peace and safety, mm -hmm. basically. And which was basically which is a defense. Hey, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. So he did what it what, what it took to to hey, scripture say make that call in the election. Sure, he did what it took to you know what I mean to be preserved from the from the said perils. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he chose that uh, the brick, which is you know that's a that's a. Uh, uh, a strong foundation, you know. Yeah. Just, just like, you know, uh, hey, we, uh, you know, we're building our foundation off Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Who is the chief cornerstone? God, that's it. The first brick laid. All right. All right. This is the book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter twenty-three, verse one. Damn, I had that. <laughs>
It says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. It says, Woe, meaning that's destruction. And to the pastors that scatter the sheep of the uh, uh, Lord's pasture. Meaning, hey, you scattering the Lord's people by telling them you know, such and such and all these false doctrines. You know, and you tell the people that you can have sex on the Shabbat, they going that way. You're telling people that the new moon is the full moon, they going that way. So you got the, the, the children of Israel being tossed to and fro by everyone in doctrine. Huh? And the Lord, hey, somebody got a hold of Jeremiah, the 14th chapter, turn to the 13th verse, because, hey, the Lord, he's going to uh, uh, judge you false prophets, man, as well as those that follow you. Verse 2, it says, <clears throat> Therefore thus said the Lord, Yahweh, power of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visit, visited them. You have driven them away because, hey, you telling them things, that are going to uh, push them further away from Yahweh Bashmash Shah. Because ultimately, you, you pretty much giving license to, uh, to your congregation to do wickedness. Right? You're not bringing your congregation closer to Yahweh Bashmash Shah. Saying there's not going to be no Jacob trouble, the MOTB is sin, this, that, and the third, man. Right? All those things that you're telling our people, man, they're not getting prepared for that day. Go ahead. It says, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, said the Lord. And hey, what, before that said, what that, uh, the Lord said, well, you have not visited them. Meaning you didn't go back and correct your false teachings, man. You have not gone into the gaps to prepare that's my it. people for the, yeah. Yep, that's it. And the Lord said, because of that, he's going to visit you. Meaning the Lord, Yahweh Bashmash Shah, is going to bring judgment upon you because of, of your wrong doings, man. Come. You can keep read, read a couple of verses in there, Bible shot. Read, read all the way to verse 4. Okay. It's uh, Jeremiah 23 and uh, 3. It says, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where, where I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. It says, And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they, be, shall they be lacking, said the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That's why the apostles, they, they constantly speak. You know, they get on the different camps, you know, elders, different brothers. But they always say, look, they believe it's some elect among you. So when the, when the shit hit the fan, when the shit hit the fan and the doctrine that you've been teaching them is not going to be enough to keep them strengthened and keep them in the spirit, everybody going to scatter. You know what I mean? And when, they, and when everybody scatter, it might be some. It might be some happen. It might be they they implement the MOT to the B, right? And then the, the spirit might just get on and be like, "Well, damn, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to take it." And you and you might start telling people to take it. You told people to take the C19. You told people to take that. See? But then look. But then we told people not to, and we didn't. And look at where we at now. We straight. And other people died, and people uh you know people fucked up. But look. We stayed on, we trusted in, in, in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. We ain't trusting them that smote us. And the Lord, uh, you ain't, didn't even get fired. I remember some people, was, uh, they was threatening to fire you. And other people like, man, I ain't taking that shit. And that shit kind of blew over. And our people took it and like, damn, well, I want to keep my job. But this nigga didn't take it and he kept his. So when, so when, when something happened where the, the, the sheep get scattered or whatever, then look, the Lord will grab his elect out of, out of wherever you want to grab him from. Uh, oh, that's probably going somewhere. But this is this time about your house, Kind, kind. Well, yeah, so it was mine. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the book of. Uh, are we going back here? Yeah. So, yeah. The Jeremiah. The Jeremiah. Let me go straight to the point. Let's go straight to what you asked. Yeah. 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 All right. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter fourteen, verse thirteen. Then said I, Ah, Lord, power. Behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine but i will give you a short peace uh in this place all right so ultimately hey, what you know he's, he's uh read the top again so yeah. it's the book of isaiah i mean jeremiah chapter 14 verse 13 then said i i all lord power behold the prophets say unto them they uh ye shall not see the sword neither shall ye have famine yeah, but hey, these false prophets are preaching to, you know, our people, what? Prosperity, safety, security. When really in reality, man, none of those things are coming to America, man. 
only things that are coming to America is plagues, man. Miseries. Right? Distress. Like uh, Ezekiel 7 said, evil and only evil is coming. That's it. But I will give you a short peace in this place. Hey, if these dudes come up and start talking shit, they ignore them unless they say something that makes sense. Go okay. ahead. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and, and a thing of naught and the what? deceit of their heart. You got individuals that know the name of Yahweh Bashmi Ashad. Right, also, that's also why Yahweh Shai said what? Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven. So, at the end of the day, what? You got cats know the name of Yahweh Bashmi Ashai? Whether or not coming in truth is sincerity, man. They're preaching bullshit. Lies to the people, man. No. Therefore, don't go ahead and read the next it. verse. Keep going. Next verse. Because the Lord, hey, the Lord, hey, that's, that's bullshit in the eyes of the Lord, man. You're teaching lies to the people. You're know, leading people the wrong way. Mark go ahead. Therefore, Thus said the Lord Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land, but sword and famine shall those prophets be consoled. Hey, you preaching to the people that what? Sword and famine is not coming Amen. to the land of America. Trouble is not coming to the land of America. Jacob's trouble is not coming. Hey, the Lord said, by those very things that you said was not coming, you're going to be consumed by it. Yep. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the land of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have, have none to bury them, them, their wives and their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness, their wickedness upon them. It's going to be a lot of dead bodies in the day. So you false prophets who are teaching bullshit, right? And your congregation who's following the bullshit, all of y'all going to suffer the judgment of Yahweh Bashim Yashai. Because at the end of the day, in reality, man, there's no excuse. Because what the Lord has the apostles and elders, bishops and brothers of great millstone, you no know, rebuking these false groups for preaching their falsehood. And, wait, and what, what, is, what does our people say? Oh, uh, you're supposed to love your brother, Ak. Oh, why, why are you hating on your brother? But that shows y'all like the understanding because what the scriptures say, open rebuke is better than secret love. All right, the rebuke is a form of love. Because if you if you see someone close to you going off, so say they say they walk into the street, man, and the bus is coming down. Hey, a bus is coming, bro. You wanted that man to flee from a, a, a death, man. But y'all, y'all leading our people towards death, man. So you want to say there's no Jacob's trouble, no sword, Reset. no famine, or none of that? Uh, uh, the Lord is going to uh, let y'all get caught up, man. This Jeremiah 5 and 12. They have belied the Lord and said, It is not he. Neither shall evil come upon us. Neither shall we see the sword nor famine. Where is this point, right. and, and the word, let me get this word belied real quick. The word lie going into deceive, lie, fail. So hey, they they lie, they lying. You know they, you know their scriptures obviously point out hey, it's gonna be Jacob's trouble, you know famine. But hey, but right here it says. It says it says neither shall. And right here it says neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see the sword or famine. Right, hey. And the, hey, the comes back. He's coming back. You know, Jeremiah, uh, what is it, Jeremiah 37? Uh, going into the uh, Jacob's trouble? Yep, uh, yep. So, yeah, hey, the Lord's coming back with evil, you know, bad times, you know, famine, you know, destruction. So, yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, mm hmm. Brothers, got something? Yeah, I got something. Oh, yeah, we can. You say you got to do something. Yeah, I got to do something. Yep, this is the, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14 and verse 9. And if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, I, the Lord, Yahweh, Shem Shai, have deceived that prophet. That's what the scriptures say, what the deceived and the deceiver are his. So the Lord is in control of who's deceiver 
man, who's being deceived, man? Because at the end of the day, the Lord is all about his elect, right? The Lord is looking for his elect. So these various different false doctrines and heresies, they're all set up as stumbling blocks to get those that Yahweh Bashem Yashai does not want out of the way. Hey, we pray that this lesson was, that this camp lesson was edifying. We would like to first start off by giving all glory and praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Hakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that teach this truth and rule well. And with that, we're going to say Shalom. 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 Really, 